Hi folks, John here. I um, just made a quick little video to review the various components of Avalanche bulletins. So as we start here, you can see there's two screenshots on the slide deck. Um, the first is from the homepage of the CAIC, um, the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, and the second is from the Northwest Avalanche Center, also called NWAC. And um, these are the two regional centers that are represented in our class. And if you just look at these images, you can see that there's a variety of colors. And this is what we call uh, the Tier 1 User Group. If you're on the website and you hover around these colors, um, they'll light up and they'll kind of give you a general idea of the danger rating. Not knowing anything about avalanche danger, um, you can expect that you know a very basic user would hover over the, the northeast side of, of the NWAC forecast and realize that it was quite dangerous over there. It's red and they'll start blinking at you. Um, yeah, so we're going to just dig into avalanche bulletins and um, kind of unpack them a little bit in this exercise. At the end of um, the PowerPoint, there's an action plan. Just a quick little assignment. I won't be graded, but just a, just a few tasks for you to do um, just to explore your local Avalanche Center. So what do bulletins provide? They give us a danger rating by elevation. They give us information about the day's avalanche problem or problems. Uh, they give us a snowpack discussion and avalanche um, these the Avalanche Center's websites, they're portals to snowpack and weather observations. Uh, before we jump into that, let's do a, a quick review of some definitions. So this is from SWAG, the 2016 edition. You hopefully have a copy of it by now. So on page 86, um, it defines um, avalanche danger as the potential for avalanches to cause damage to something of value. And you'll see that the term danger and hazard are used synonymously in the 2016 SWAG. Avalanche danger is an environmental condition. It's worth remembering that. And then danger is a ranking, avalanche danger is a ranking of avalanche danger for a period of time over a specific region. Um, so that's pretty important too as we start thinking about um, the danger ratings that we issue in your forecasting class or that you're reading from avalanche bulletins. Um, there's a time limit on these dangers. So it's generally 24 hours, but it depends on the avalanche center. And it's a ranking of danger for a specific time over a specific region. North American Avalanche Danger Scale, we've seen this before in class. We had a presentation on it, but just to review it, we've got five danger levels, low through extreme. There's numbers that correlate with the names. There's also icons. There's travel advice. And then in the far right of the danger scale, there's a likelihood of avalanches and then the avalanche size and distribution. If you haven't spent much time reading through the North American danger scale, I really recommend it. And um, it does feel like a lot of semantics, um, the possibles versus the likelies versus the very likelies you'll see in, in, in that uh, likelihood category, but it is worth being familiar with it. So here's an example of avalanche danger over a specific forecast area. So this is the front range from the CAIC. You can see that the front range has issued a danger um, for specific elevations. So the elevation bands, we have below tree line, near tree line, and above tree line, and, and there's different danger ratings for those elevation bands. This is the same kind of example from NWAC. This is a Mount Hood forecast. You can see that the Northwest Avalanche Center is the same thing, they issue danger by elevation band. A Little bit different graphics, but uh, pretty similar. Avalanche Forecast Centers also list avalanche problems. Um, under the problems category, they describe the avalanche character, the, the distribution of the avalanche, aspect and elevation, the likelihood of triggering it, and the size. Um, so as we flush out problems more in these courses, um, we'll look at all four components that go into an avalanche problem. You can have up to three problems on any given site. Forecasters generally try to keep as few problems as possible on the bulletin, but you may end up with three. Remember that problems are all about risk treatment, and uh, we want to keep the risk treatment strategies as simple as possible for a clear message to the public. Avalanche forecast centers give you a, a snowpack summary and a weather summary. So this is from the CAIC site. Um, the CIC site gives you two summaries. They give you a more general summary, um, maybe geared to the Tier 2 user. And this is available right above the, the danger rating for the day. There's a more in-depth snowpack summary buried a little bit deeper in the site, um, but this is a great resource. And then 
these avalanche centers, both NWAC and the CAIC, give you a mountain weather forecast. The CAIC gives zone forecasts for its various zones, and all those forecasts are at 11,000 feet. And then lastly, these avalanche center websites, they're portholes to field and weather observations. So as you click around the site, you'll be able to see huge databases at the CAIC for avalanche observations um, throughout seasons, um, field reports, and then there's a link to weather stations. So you get these weather station observations as well. So in um, the, right, the bottom right of the slide, these are weather stations in the front range of Colorado, and you can just link directly to them. So the CIC really is a clearinghouse for a majority of the weather stations, or the mountain weather stations um, here around the state. So it's an awesome, awesome resource. So your action plan is to find the following at your local regional avalanche center's website. Um, just find where the forecast is going to be populated or published. I understand if um, the snow hasn't flown yet and, you're, and the forecasts aren't up, but you still figure out where the avalanche forecast would come in. Um, and in that forecast, maybe you can see information about danger problems with snowpack summaries. Um, figure out where the observations area of the websites are. They're not um, the most intuitive, but you, if you click around, you should be able to find them. And then identify one weather station that works well for snow accumulation, one weather station that works well for wind in your zone. So thinking about um, elevation and maybe a little bit of local knowledge, which uh, weather stations you might use for a day of touring or observation gathering in your local zone. So that's it. Um, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in and hope that that was a good review of weather stations and uh, the CIC and NWAC uh, websites. Thanks so much.